Just about set for baseball, and Dave, we get our first look at left-hander Ryan Ashford. Ryan is a Miami commit. Yeah, and today's going to be a little different than yesterday. We had some great pitching yesterday, uh, primarily primary pitchers. Day two, we see a lot more secondary pitchers, but Ashford, a primary pitcher, a 6'2", 195 lefty from Lake Mary High School in Florida, plays for the Power Baseball Navy team. Been up to 87 at past PG events and has been a busy participant over 100 innings at PG events in the past. 104 innings, 121 strikeouts, in fact. Big numbers there as we take a look at his warm-up process. Again, these two teams will wrap up today with play as their summer travel ball seasons are really just underway and this, with this uh, outing here in Marietta, Georgia. And over the last week or so, a lot of these players have wrapped up their high school baseball seasons. And the last couple of weeks, we look at Julius Thau, who will start at second base. We'll also see him at shortstop uh, a little bit later on in this game as well. At first base, you've got Branson Waters. And Waters is going to switch some time here and there at first base along with Braden Moon today. There's the shortstop, Gavin Kelly. Early on in this one, Gavin Kelly elects to go with the sunglasses on top. Of the helmet, Caden Lopez in right field for Team Vegas Gold. And the hitters, including Jonathan Holt, hey, get getting ready to go to work. And bat against Ryan Ashford. Red team's anxious. They had their whole team out there with bats in their hand. Now the two big events, as you mentioned, going into the travel season, the two big events for this age group on the perfect game calendar the WWBA 16 and under national championship will be held here at East Cobb and surrounding fields from July 16th to July 23rd. And then two weeks later, the PG 16U World Series, which pits most of the best teams in the country against each other, will be down in Sanford, Florida at the Boomba Sports Complex July 25th, 29th. So that's what these players in a team, travel team context, are looking forward to. This is the biggest individual event on their schedule this summer, the best, biggest showcase event. As we've touched on, these players very familiar with each other, even at a young age, as they've been on the circuit. Over the last couple of years, rising juniors, players that we see today, will enter their junior year late summer, early fall, depending on where they're at. Ground ball slowly hit towards short. Gavin Kelly with his first opportunity of the ball game. He retires Trey Snyder for the first out here in the top of the first inning. And I've mentioned this every game and will continue to do so over the next uh, couple days as well. A couple different perfect game rules. Uh, five batter maximum per inning, three batter minimum or three outs. Big difference, no walks or no hit by pitches in PG Showcase games. If you get a ball four, you're hit by pitch, you stay in the batter's box, and a ghost runner is put out there, and you see all fastballs for the rest of the at-bat. Ethan Sarawick has a base hit. Great effort there by Gavin Kelly, the shortstop ranging far to his left up the middle. And Sarawick aboard with a one-out single against Ryan Ashford. You can see already Ashford keeping the ball Low in the zone, creating ground ball. That was quite a play. That would come in handy if there was a runner on second, maybe to save a run. It looked good, but the runner was going to be easily safe. I was thinking the same thing right there, Dave. <laughs> Hitter now, Hudson Schof. He bats with a runner at first base. And one down in the first inning uh, against Ryan Ashford. Schoff, catcher, and an outfielder. That one gets away from the catcher, Anderson French. And Sarawick will move up to second base. Schoff looks like one of those these players who's going to be able to play multiple positions at the next level, a primary catcher, but runs very well, 6-7 in the 60. Showed a 91-mile-an-hour arm from the outfield, so that tool is there. 
excuse me, that was his exit velocity. My bad. Made states in swimming, football, and baseball. Swimming? There you go. Remember Seth Beer at Clemson now, I believe, with the Diamondbacks. Was a terrific swimmer early on in his scholastic career. Well, that's pulling one from deep in the past, Steve. Yes, yeah, Seth Beer was an age group champion swimmer. Shove takes outside. Shove, when asked and shared his answer about a great challenge that he's overcome, and I like this one, Dave. Learning how to accept and control things that aren't in my control. Oh, that's an adult statement right there. That's and a, even that's for a... some adults, including <laughs> yours truly, that's not an easy thing. Oh, no, that, that's a mature statement. Somebody is teaching him well, and he's perceptive. How's that pitch back? I'd wish that upon every every human being on this planet, including myself. Daily lives would become all that much easier, right? Yes. Show for the count of three balls and two strikes. Ryan Ashford on the hill. Retired the leadoff batter and gave up a single. And he picks up a strikeout. Good location there. Looked like a fastball with a little bit of cutting action on it. Ashford's been working 82-84 with the fastball and working it low in the zone. Also throwing a, a sweeping curveball. Perry Hargett with an opportunity here. Two down and a runner at second base. Hargett takes a first pitch strike. And part of Ashford's package here is a very deceptive delivery he keeps that ball very well hidden behind his body and you know that real tight low three-quarters arm slot gets a little wider on the breaking ball to get around it but the hitter's not getting a chance to see the ball very well Sarah Wick the runner at second base reached with a base hit this one inside it got him so we'll have a base runner and Hargit, see his right arm all wrapped up. He's got the sleeve. Umpire checks on him, appears to be all right. He didn't have a very happy look on his face, but I guess no hitter's happy after he gets hit by a pitch. And right there, that I thought that gum in the shoulder got him down to closer to the elbow where it's going to sting a bit. And a lot of hitters wear that protective gear there. Not so for Hargit. Target out on strikes. Two strikeouts in the first inning for Ryan Ashford. As he worked there with the runner at second base with a ghost runner after the hit by pitch. Leaves two runners on. And Hargit talks with his teammates. And a nice job by Ashford to strand a couple runners here. Yeah, as I said, it's I think it's all about deception with Ashford. Was up to 85. He'll add to that as he gets a little older, but you know, has those low arm angles. Hitters aren't seeing the ball, and as long as he mixes it up and throws strikes, that's, that works at every level. So we'll see Ashford for the second inning. He'll get two. As we take a peek into the Vegas Gold dugout and the trees off in the distance here at the East Cobb Complex. Beautiful setting, Marietta, Georgia. This is day number five for Dave Ronsley and the perfect game staff for the Junior National.